was very, very nice, Mark. All right. We are recording. I better, I better log into this job. So here's Jobber, guys. I can start my timer, which I have amend authority, so I can back backdate this. And uh, so we're all on the job. So we're taking down these two big uh, cottonwoods. And we got the whole crew. Let me get my phone on here. So we got the whole crew out here at a big job. We got Brandon up there taking care of a prune. We've got these four stems coming down. It's actually three stems, but one is a great big, you know, coalesced, co-dominant. Taylor's already working up into that. I'm dawdling here on the ground. We got Mark on a rig. He's setting up a GRCS. We'll have a couple of GRCSs going here. Uh, Zach just finished pruning this oak tree out here. Uh, I'm going to stand behind what I say. After July 15th, it is safe to prune oak trees. And uh, we're going to prove it here. <laughs> and we're not in an ordinance area. This is Lake Wisconsin. So uh, we can we can we can trust the science in this neighborhood. Uh, so we uh, we did some uh, you know crown raising on that and some deadwood. Took out a spruce over here. We assigned some work for the neighbor over here who's trying to sell the house. And these are the big order of business right here. So we'll soon have a lot of hands on deck we'll get the lift back here wiggle it back and back to take care of the backside lead i got to get up there and make a drop cut before he comes over here game of trees we're having fun all right well we're finally set up i had the lift go over there and take care of that prune so that's all done the guy's getting bunch of other work done while we've been getting these set up. Taylor is up in the top of his rigging. Uh, he's, Zach set me a line, got me an isolated line. And uh, he took the one he got, which is fine. Um, we got poison ivy right here. I'm immune, so I'm not going to worry about it, but I'm still going to climb up there take off some of these jump over here take off those I might just uh, pull some of this off get it out of the way my guys so they don't have to worry about it Toss this over here for now. My wife is gonna get poison ivy now when she washes my clothes. Kind soul that she is. I'll have to warn her. Okay, I'm gonna drop cut some stuff right here. I'm gonna bump this all day long. Okay, we got a piece of iron right there. I'm gonna work on, hopefully my camera angle is good. Should've put my big flip line on, but you know, cottonwood bark is pretty user friendly. Soft 
got real rough bark, it's tough. With a soft foot line with a big diameter tree. There's a bunch of nubs and everything. It's hard to get it to flip over. A stiffer flip line, you know, helps you really whip it up West Coast style. Getting close to a drop cut. All right, stand clear below me. I'm just gonna knock this off. Cottonwood hanging on to itself. <laughs> oh. Alright, I can unhook because I'm tied in. That's the beauty of a top rope. Like you can't do that with a flip line only. But with a top rope, I just unhook and flip around. Uh, do I got a clear drop on this, Mark? Mark, right there, Mark. Do I got a clear drop on this? Okay, I'll uh, I'll compromise it a little bit. <laughs> we still brush the deck just a little, but it's just a couple leaves. I could have slowed down on the back cut just a hair. But fortunately the tips of cottonwood branches are fairly fragile. All right, I'll keep my rope out of the way here. Drop cut, back side of my tree. Actually both sides. Like a little breeze. All right, you can tie a block and a rigging line to my climbing line. You coming down to rig those out of my way, buddy? All right, we'll unhook again. All right. 
So again, having a top rope set ahead of time, I was able to just flip my line around that. Not have to worry about being insecure. All right. We might knock that piece of deadwood off. Stand clear. Watch out, Mark. Little drop cut. Tip over and cut free. So I like to stay on the cut there. If that comes over and then swings back and then let's go, maybe it's tagging the deck. But you stay on the cut and send her. All right, I want my tie-in way up there. And then I'll put a, a rigging block below it. And then I'll be able to, then I'll be able to come down here and jump over there and get a big drop cut before Brandon gets back here at the left. Okay, I'm going all the way to the top, Mark, to uh, reset my line. I'm dropping some stuff below me. Pretty good size three inch limb. Okay, we're gonna switch the lanyard first. this to run out the weight of my rope could pull it right out of my akimbo so my tie a little slip out there I do have a two-in-one lane here. Visually, physically, and visually check your connections. Especially when you're flip lining like this. Now I'm gonna go on this side. And then I'll unclip my akimbo to bring it. 
through, so I'm on the correct side of this limb. Thumbs free. So let's look at that. So we got some less than favorable stock, but he's got a compression force right down through the middle of that. So he's rigging down. And you know, it's, it, this has been dying back. So that was the best location for a drop zone, but it, it wasn't a live branch. <laughs> and you know, it's two years dead, maybe slow decline, kind of like this. So he cut off some live sprouts down there. So there were live sprouts on this and there's a live sprout right there. So it's not like desiccated dead, but he's got a compression angle. So the force splits the difference between the two ropes, which is gonna run parallel to the angle of that limb. And so that's, that's a, a great, great job, Taylor. Branch coming down. Probably set up a uh, a block right here. He says it's on. You want to untangle my rope, Mark? I don't need to bring up the tail of my rope. Okay, stand clear of this block, just in case I drop it. Man, what is going on? Man. This is crazy. Like, get this off. Next time, Mark, tie on to the end of the rope. Yeah, I know, but yeah, look what it did here. It's just a mess. I'm micromanaging you and I'm having fun doing it. Probably all the higher I need to be. This is nice and sturdy. Did you say your blood sugar was 37? 57. Well, that's still low. 37 would have been remarkable. <laughs> Do you know if you were on the carnivore diet, you could run that blood sugar real low. <laughs>
Now, if I were to micromanage you, Mark, a bowling on the end of this would have been more prudent. That rope almost came out of your little slip knot stuff there. And then we would have been up here, you would have been tying the rope back on. I would have had to say, why don't you tie that on right this time? Or something like that. I, I didn't stop to show everybody how you did it. I should have, it was a good lesson. All right. I can't really take any of this stuff right now because all that's in the way. So I'm gonna go up and get my, am I double hooked on? I am. I should set up my phone to watch Taylor. I think I will. Uh. Uh. All right, we're gonna tie a bowling with a Yosemite finish. I saw a discussion on well, I can't remember his Instagram or YouTube. And someone talking about the bull and you know, how secure it is. It's not coming undone. It's like, how long does this take to tie this? Not much longer, you know? It's just, if it's your habit, it just happens. Little chunk coming down in the woods. Okay, I got a couple of branches I gotta cut out of my way. Get up here and get balanced, Kevin. Uh, branch coming to the ferns. Or the porch. Little branch between the trees. Should've left that on for my camera. Now because my tie-in's kind of way out there, you know, I want to make sure I'm going to get there. So, I got to take off those little low branches anyway. So I'm just going to come down here where it's nice and predictable, right down by the poison ivy. So now, here I can talk through this. When making a jump, over there and your and your tie-in point is kind of out in front of you so it wants to pull you that way you know this is really close so it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for that I'm gonna shoot for the mulberry and I'm gonna land there you know and this is like a minuscule example but I'm gonna ride the arc and I'm gonna come into this now even on that short little jump Something's hooking my... Even on that short little jump, I could feel the gravity trying to pull me this way. So you, you aim high and you ride the arc and then come into this and you come in nice and soft. So they uh, politely waited for me. I might have to do a little maintenance pruning of this mulberry man if these mulberries were ripe oh some of them are uh, they would qualify for keto yeah pretty good uh pretty good pretty good flavor Mulberry is kind of like avocado. You almost have all levels of uh, fruit on the tree. I mean, you have 
you don't quite have the flowers. Avocado, you got flowers, you have unripe fruit, you have ripe fruit, you have rotting fruit. Mulberry, you have... I don't see any flowers, but we have green, red, and ripe. And probably a few rotting. So it's almost like avocado. So I'll eat a couple grams of carbohydrate here just for nostalgia's sake. Before I get rid of this. Yeah, I'm kind of thirsty, so these are tasting very good. And the, the dirt on these gloves. <laughs> that helps my, uh, my gut, you know, my immune systems. good I'll have to check what the carbohydrates are in, in these things I mean they don't taste super sweet so I could probably have you know a whole cup Oh, let's cut my lanyard. Of course, we'll test my immunity with that uh, poison ivy now. Now, put this in my mouth. All right. I got a... Uh, I got a drop cut coming here. Are you clear? You don't look clear. It's coming right at you, Mark. No, I got a dead four inch dead branch coming right at you. Can you hear me? Am I on? Now that was my secondary tie-in, so, you know, it was kind of close, but it's a sharp saw. I felt confident. Well, I'm so close to the ground, can you tie on my water? Brandon, could you tie on my water? Well, Mark's got you on that. You know, a clove hitch should do it. And we'll try not to rub it all in the poison ivy so, you know, I don't have to test the immunity of my lips. That's not the part of my body I prefer to test poison ivy. Of course, I just did because I ate mulberries with my gloves, which I touched the poison ivies with. So I guess I am testing my mouth. Very nice. And your assistants kept it taut. I still could get poison ivy on there with my fingers on the cap. I have two two things of LMNT 
in here, two packets, and six drops of iodine. There you go, my water's on the ground, if you could take it off now. I'm about to give you a bunch to do, Brandon. I am considering springing for a gyro lanyard from camp. Oh. I guess I should have brought that behind my back. It's kind of like muzzle awareness on gun safety. Blade awareness. I don't want to come near this single line. I mean, I don't die if I come off this, but it's really an inconvenience. I'm just gonna hand cut this. Stand clear. You know, you gotta love these silkies. drop cut here okay I don't need much movement here at all I'm gonna come out here though so I have better control because this this can get funky in here I'm gonna cut a really narrow notch but fairly deep and then I'm gonna stay on the cut have it drop down, boom. But I want it to come off. Stand clear. I wanted it to hold on there the whole time so that way it closed on the kerf and it just sat there until I I got this and I wanted to make sure I eliminated this down here first now I was a little above not enough to matter but I could have made a kerf in that and it, it could have wanted to take my saw but it was dropping in the same orientation so it'd be tough for a kerf to catch my my bar in this scenario because it's going to drop straight away and just fall off my bar but i could have come i could have been just a little farther behind that but i i didn't want to be back here or it can it can like hinge so it's a fine line you want to kind of be in front a little bit or right on if you get back here you might get a funky hinge okay stand clear now there's something to be said for pick them up sticks there but cottonwood rakes up nicely almost falling through my akimbo. My akimbo's just coming up with me. Now there's something to be said for a 
sending this all at once and that piece helps bring this piece this way and they both land right out there I think I want to set up a second block though I'm gonna need a second block it's just like this is a nice yard that one branch there I knew I could get it to drop you know um I'm gonna send down my my rigging line and you can put it on the line so that I don't have to untie it okay so I'm gonna set this up here on this one so that we bring both of these this way. And we're way over here, so when they slam the trunk, we don't have shrapnel next to the, the house. Beautiful day on Lake Wisconsin. That's the Wayland grade over there. Uh, that green area beyond the road is, is like the marsh. So what are our angles gonna be? We're coming over from there, so we're gonna have a little bit of a pulling force. Wait, what are you doing? Okay, you want me to get... Nice! He saw the gap. He saw the gap. So, which way do I want to go? If I go that way. If I go that way, I'll be choked. So I'm thinking of which way to tie my, my cow hitch here. And I think I want to come this way and have it choked back. I was hoping you would have ran up and taken some of those over there. But I guess I'm kind of in your way now. Wow. For those upper ones of yours over there. Because I got my phone running over there, but I don't think it's getting you now. But as soon as I get these out of the way, I'll be going back over there. <sighs> but we're gonna confidently take this whole branch. I could send this, but it's just gonna Beat up the yard. And now, if the branch is going to be facing down, you want to tie the knot up. Okay, so this is somewhat counterintuitive. Okay, so the force is gonna be like this. So I want the most rope on the bottom side of the force. So I want this, this final loop to be away from that force. I don't want the force to be on this side on a single strand. I want the force to be pulling against this back side. So if the, if the tip is gonna go down, you tie 
the knot up. This is going to be up. And if the if it's if the tip is going to go up, you want to tie the knot down, which would actually be up. <laughs> I'm thinking inversely like I'm doing a negative rig. But in this case, if if uh how would I say that to if the tip is going to be down, I want to tie the knot. I tied the knot up. If the tip is going to stay up, I'm going to tie the knot down. That's how to say it. All right, I'm ready to take a big rig. I want you to let this run. Uh, you know, you're going to want two wraps. Two wraps will run. Do we have an understanding? And my herd. Sorry, I didn't have my earmuff on it. Well, we're about to test the rope for length. With with two with two wraps, he's gonna have ability to stop it. He's 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 got enough rope there. Alright. Now I gotta be yeah, I would get that rope a little more well managed. I've got to change my lanyard to something else. <laughs> well, I'm micromanaging myself right now. Because, because this is coming over to this block, I, don't, I didn't want to be tied to that one. Be, have my face up there. So, oh, look at that. So at any rate, I'm gonna be able to back out of the way here. So let it kind of come over and then let it run. Very, very nice, Mark. So I think they're just doing the, uh, trim the piece to the ground. Which is a good idea. It's a little bit of above the shoulder cutting, but. Oh, Mark, Mark, look out. Bark hazard, bark hazard. Do you forgive me? I, I did call out. <laughs> I could have just watched it hit you. Nice, nice. I am going to take both of these at once. That is our best option. We got a rigging point over here, so it'll crash over in those mulberries. I can't move because this bark's going to come off. <laughs> well, if it means anything, Mark, I stopped moving around when I realized I was going to kill somebody.
Thank you, thank you, Mark. That's meaningful. We do try to have a grace culture around here. Ho! Oh! Yeah, sorry, Mark. Yeah, like it's, let me. Anyway, can we, uh, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock some bark loose. This man. Watch out, Brandon. Another one. Okay, I think we're pretty clear. Okay, you better take care of Taylor for a minute. Dead branch coming off. Nope, missed it. Nice, nice rig. Ran there right over the fir tree. Beautiful. Oh, if my phone's still running, it got gotcha. you. That was good rig. Yeah, those will be nice. going to <laughs> I mean if 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 the rigs if the rigs disappear quickly this comes down quickly wow Well, I'm closer to the ground than Taylor. All right, that's gonna be a nice rig. Look at how they're choked together like that. Kind of opposite in a pose. That's gonna come right off of there. I'm gonna compromise it here. When I say a compromise notch, that's probably a Kevinism. The weight is going at the house, all right? So to notch it directly away from the the weight would be, you know, like 100% opposed. But a compromise between those two extremes is kind of right in the middle, like a 45 degree point between the lean of the branch and where I want it to go. So I'll get this to come off sideways. I'll, I'll probably notch it in the angle of this weight so that this weight pulls it to the side. Because um, the whole branch together wants to go right at the deck. So I'm gonna make my notch a compromise notch between the inclination of the branch and where I want it to go. And of course our block is back behind me here. So we have the rope to aid us. It can't, if we tighten up the rope, it's not gonna let it go that way, so it's gonna kinda of ride the rope to the notch. But I'm gonna to have to be kinda of out of the way here so that that rope goes away from me. It could go just a hair lower. Could send a little bit of butt with this. And then that brings the rope farther away from me. I'm ready for a rig. Taylor's ready for a rig. I think I'm more ready than Taylor is. But if you want, uh, if you want to make two grabs with the loader before we send another one, that's all right. I've got two more rigs over here, and then the lift could come back here.
taking this bad boy the whole thing it's double slung so yeah two two wraps it is 50 feet long i i don't know that it's 50 feet long all right could be some shrapnel uh you you could kind of, you could kind of just hold this mark yeah Oh, I'm going to hold it, he says. stay up there shake the sugar tree a little bit of a sway dead branches well most of the dead branches would have been like out there falling I guess I could might as well rig this chunk wood off first oh how about that <laughs> Don't try this at home, folks. That's how you have your uh, rigging line hold your uh, flip line for you. Okay, I'm trying not to knock bark down. Don't knock bark down. I think I'll sling this one right about here and then it'll come off of there right in that orientation. I should be able to just back cut it basically. Let it slide off. Alright. Don't don't move around Kev. Check my camera. It's still recording. How much battery? Getting low. Playing the game of trees. 